As we continue to wake up to the lies that we've been born into, some things can get pretty deep and sometimes unreal. We often want to deny its validity because if we acknowledge the facts, it requires change. And for many, this is something that is not desired. But this topic is one of those things that needs to be understood. I often think about the scripture in Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 and 23. It says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. When I first reviewed that scripture many years ago, it confused me on how someone wouldn't actually know him, though they were calling on him and casting out demons in his name. But this topic really makes me understand how it could be. We say we love Yahshua. Now for many new to my channel, Yahshua is the actual Hebrew name of Jesus. Jesus is a translation. Yahshua means salvation, as all Hebrew names have meanings. But again, we say we love Yahshua, but we choose to worship and celebrate him in the way we desire and not based off of what he told us. How could we say we know him, but not know that he hates this pagan worship and wants us to be set apart? If we don't know that, it's easy to understand how he could turn many of us away and say, I never knew you. How could we say we know him and don't know about the things he hates? Now, depending on how much you've been awakened to the truth and the deception we have been given in this world, this information may be a confirmation to you or maybe just too much to bear. What I ask for you to do after you finish this video is sincerely pray about it and take it to scripture. My full purpose is to prepare the church, the bride, for the coming of the Messiah. There are certain things that need to come to light and be understood. I've been assigned with this mission and I am doing my best to sincerely carry it out. Understand that none of this is about me. So before you want to place me in a box that allows you to ignore what I'm about to say, none of the things you may want to characterize me as are true. Please understand I am not a Jehovah Witness or Mormon or of any other denomination. I strongly believe in salvation only through Yahshua HaMashiach. HaMashiach equals the Messiah. He is the only way to the Father. I believe fully in the Bible. I do not believe in any separation of the gospel, which is why I do not claim in any denomination. I grew up myself personally celebrating Christmas all my life. It used to be my favorite holiday and time of the year. If this was something Yahshua desired for us to do, I would be gladly doing it because for my family, it has always been a great time of the year. But after I recommitted my life to Yahweh, I wanted to live more through his word and not just based on what I was told and taught to do. As I moved with that idea, I read the Bible diligently and realized there were many things that we did in his name that were based off of traditions and not based off of scripture. It's based from this understanding that we will start. Let's begin. Before I start explanations, I always like to start with scripture because that's what matters most. It's all about what the Bible says. When speaking with people, I used to hear many people say, well, there's no real scripture that tells us not to celebrate Christmas, so it's not really that big of a deal. But that is incorrect. He speaks very much about the subject, but he doesn't specifically name Christmas because Christmas wasn't celebrated during his time. He speaks about traditions and customs because it's not only Christmas that we practice falsely, but many other traditions and customs as well. So let's see and understand what he says about traditions. Yahshua himself said in Mark chapter 7, verse 13, making the word of Elohim of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. This is exactly what we do. I speak about the scripture more in depth in part 27 of my History of Religion series. But when we practice traditions that have been passed down, we make the word of Elohim of no effect. Christmas was never commanded in scripture. It is a tradition that was passed down over time. It is a tradition of men. The Apostle Paul speaks on this specifically in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Please understand that this is what the celebration of Christmas is. It is a tradition of men. It is not according to Christ. We do not have one scripture that tells us that we should celebrate his birthday. He has never even told us what day it was that he was born on. The celebration of his birthday, known as Christmas, is absolutely a tradition of man. 
it is something that man created. The Apostle Paul warned us not to be cheated through the philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of this world. Let's go back into the Old Testament. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, Yahweh speaking through the prophet Jeremiah says, Thus says Yahweh, Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Now we will revisit this verse, because he says more following it. But you should understand that the Gentile nations, this is every other nation that was not Israel, they were pagans. They worshipped multiple gods in the pagan structure of Father God, Mother God, and Son of God. You can watch part one of my History of Religion series to gain a deeper understanding of this. Yahweh told his people not to learn their ways. Hold on to that warning, because I will soon show that Christmas is a way of the Gentile nations, and nothing that came from Yahweh. I lastly want you to go back to when Yahweh, through Moses, delivered Israel out of Egypt, and then gave them the Ten Commandments. This is found in Exodus chapter 32. Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights with Yahweh. He was receiving instruction. Israel grew impatient and thought Moses wasn't coming back. They decided they were going to honor Yahweh in their own way. They took off their golden earrings and molded it into a golden calf and said, This is your Elohim, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. They built an altar for it and did burnt offerings and peace offerings. They literally did everything Yahweh just commanded them not to do. Yahweh was extremely upset. He told Moses to go down there and stop them. He said, Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. But Moses pleaded with him, and so Yahweh just severely punished them. 3,000 men fell that day. I use this as a visual example of how Yahweh reacts to his people serving him in the way they desire and not from what he commanded. Though their intentions were sincere and they wanted to pay honor to him for delivering them out of Egypt, he did not want this type of worship. As they were going to possess their promised land, Yahweh told them in Deuteronomy chapter 12 verses 29 through 31, When Yahweh, your Elohim, cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you displace them and dwell on their land? Take heed to yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? I also will do likewise. You shall not worship Yahweh, your Elohim, in that way. For every abomination to Yahweh, which he hates, they have done to their gods. For they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. So from these verses, it should be made clear that we shouldn't be worshiping Yahweh in any way that we desire, though our intentions may be sincere. He said the way they worship their gods is an abomination to him. We should be very careful of partaking in traditions of men. But for many, I understand that the scriptures, though they should be enough, they still may need more understanding. So we should also know and understand the history of Christmas. The first thing you should know is that Christmas was celebrated long before Yahshua was ever born. Again, to understand the ancient world and their beliefs, part one of my History of Religion series will give you a great deal of background. But ever since the time of Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz, pagans have celebrated the birth of their sun god on December 25th. It obviously was never called Christmas, but it was a pagan festival celebrated on the winter solstice. Here's the background understanding. Shortly after Nimrod was killed, Semiramis became pregnant and found another way to stay in power. She told the people it was the spirit of Nimrod that impregnated her. She claimed she was having a virgin birth from the spirit of Nimrod. She claimed to have slept with no man and that she was impregnated by Nimrod's spirit. Nimrod was now a father and Semiramis was the mother. This is the start and beginning of father and mother god worship. It is the primary driver of polytheism. This is where the Madonna and child imagery comes from. Semiramis managed to convince her followers that Nimrod did not die, but he ascended to the sun. She claimed it was the rays of the sun god Nimrod that caused her to conceive. He was now to be worshipped now as Baal, the sun god. The sun's name was Tammuz. He was now the son of God. He was the sun god reborn. And he was born on the winter solstice. His birthday is recorded in our modern calendar as December 25th. This story goes throughout all the different pagan nations' beliefs. In Egypt, they worship Horus, child of Isis and Osiris. In ancient Persia, 
they celebrated the sun god reborn, Mithra, on December 25th. In ancient Greece, they celebrated Adonis, and Rome celebrated Apollo. That's what paganism is. These Gentile nations worship the same god within the same story, just with different names. But this reborn sun god's birthday was celebrated during the winter solstice. Sun worship is one of the main pillars of all pagan religions. Sun worshippers and nature religions held major celebrations at the winter solstice, which is, as they believe, the victory of the strength of the sun over the forces of darkness that try to suppress it. So this is the background of pagans' worship on this day long before Yahshua ever entered the scene. So let's discuss when Christmas came about. So we are now past the time of the death and resurrection of our Messiah. Belief in Yahshua was spreading all throughout the Roman Empire. As I showed the other pagan nations that worshipped the birth of the sun god, like I explained, Rome was no different. They had a pagan festival called Saturnalia. Saturnalia, from December 17th to the 24th, was a week-long festival with torchlight processions, gift-giving, and merrymaking, culminating in a winter solstice feast on December 25th. Well, after Yahshua, the worship of the sun god continued widely throughout the empire. In the year 274, Roman Emperor Aurelian declared the god, now called Sol Invictus, he was now the official deity of the Roman Empire. Aurelian built a splendid temple of the sun in Rome and set the sun's birthday celebration on December 25th. Sol Invictus was now known as the sun god of the later Roman Empire and known as the unconquered sun. Later on, in the 4th century, Constantine became emperor of Rome. The cult of Sol Invictus was still at its height and the portrait of the sun god was on the coins of Constantine. Like I said earlier, the followers of Yahshua were growing in number in Rome. Constantine claims to have a vision of a cross and converts all of Rome under the religion of Christianity. This was not because he was a true believer in Yahshua, but a way of squashing the conflict between the pagans and the ones they classified as Christians. Either way, what Constantine did was mesh Rome's already known pagan beliefs with belief in Yahshua. Yahshua was plugged in as the sun god reborn and Mary was the mother goddess. There was much gelling of beliefs that later formed the Roman Catholic Church. Much of this was done at the Council of Nicaea, but this is another topic that will be discussed later in my History of Religion series. Long story short, this is how Christmas was started. The Christian church formed by Rome did not reject pagan practices and beliefs. It completely mixed it all together with the belief from the followers of Yahshua. Christmas was established as the birth of the sun god reborn, but instead of it being under the other pagan names of their sun gods, they used the name Jesus. This is the condensed version of how Christmas came about. The early church did not celebrate this holiday. Christmas has always been pagan. In fact, even in America, in the 17th century, the celebration of Christmas was banned in places in the country, believing it was an insult to honor Elohim on a day associated with paganism, which it is. This holiday is completely pagan. But after time, it became a tradition that was passed down and over time accepted. Generation after generation after generation just started accepting it, while people never questioned what it was they were doing. The American church was infiltrated by Freemasons and the Black Boule. Pastors stopped holding a strictness to the word, and scriptures like the ones I used in the beginning of this video were not used by the majority to protect the church. We are now at a point in time where people look at you as a blasphemer for not celebrating Christmas, instead of people looking at those celebrating Christmas as the blasphemers. People like to say, keep the Christ in Christmas, and look at those who say Xmas as being against the Messiah. Myself personally have been put at odds against my own family for bringing up these facts. The point is that the whole holiday is not biblical and completely surrounded by paganism. I mean, the Christmas tree goes back to Semiramis and Tammuz. The queen, Semiramis, told worshipers that when Nimrod was killed, some of his blood fell on the stump of an evergreen tree and the stump grew into a full new tree overnight. The tree symbolized dead Nimrod, and the new evergreen tree symbolized how he came to life again, as the reborn, unconquered god. This is a pagan symbol. Pagans use this in their celebration of the sun god. Scripture even speaks about it going back to the scripture in Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 2-4. through Thus says Yahweh, Do not learn the way of the Gentiles, 
do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen, with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers, so that it will not topple. He's speaking of a Christmas tree. It should be called a Tammuz tree, because it's all pagan. Yet how many homes of families that classify themselves as Christians place this tree up in their homes, and Christian churches place this up in their sanctuary, defiling their place of worship? It's a pagan symbol, and there's no scriptural justification to have it. There's not even one scripture that even shows why you would even have a Christmas tree. It's obviously something that has nothing to do with the Bible. I can go through everything that is done during the time of Christmas and show its pagan roots, but for sake of time, I will not. At this point, if you don't get it by now, you probably won't. None of this has to do with Yahshua. This is a day that the world has worshipped Lucifer for millenniums. The sun god reborn is a form of the Antichrist. This is the one who the world is worshipping every December 25th. This is why I deem this day as one of the most wickedest times of the year. The amount of wicked spiritual energy that is being transmitted at this time is ridiculous. Those who classify themselves as Christians like to think that the world hijacked Christmas by adding Santa Claus and all of that commercialization. The truth is, this was just another way to get the other part of the world who didn't want to celebrate Jesus to take part in the celebration still. If Christians would stay true to the word, we would not be deceived as we have been. The only people deceived in celebrating Christmas are those who say they are in the church and true followers of the Messiah. Now, if you've celebrated this holiday last year and years prior, and maybe you had plans of celebrating it this year, I pass no blame around you as an individual. This is what deception is. We all have been deceived in some way, shape, or form. I'm just happy you have been exposed to the truth now so you're able to do something about it before it's too late for you. The only people I will place direct blame upon are the pastors who have celebrated this and promoted this in their church. They should not be leaders if they do not understand that this is pagan. If there were strong leaders teaching the truth to the church, we would not be so far gone. Let me clarify. Maybe you say that you still want to celebrate them on December 25th, but take away all the gift giving and Christmas tree and whatnot. It doesn't matter. You are still worshiping Yahshua in a way that is expressly spoken against. Yahweh says do not worship him in the way of the Gentiles. Though you are sincere that you want to worship him, he does not claim honor from this. Remember Israel because they thought that they were being sincere in their worship of him when they molded that golden calf. But he struck 3,000 of them down because of his anger towards their actions. That should be an example for you. The fortunate thing is that we have been extended grace where we still have time for repentance. And that's why I'm making this video. There's no telling if we even make it to another Christmas season. But I want you to understand how wicked this all is. You must repent and ask for forgiveness. Don't harden your heart to this message and stay prideful. We cannot worship Yahshua the way we want. In John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, Yahshua says, But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Elohim is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Ask yourself, do you think celebrating his birthday, though he's never told you to do so, is worshiping him in truth like he's looking for? Do you think celebrating his birthday on a day that you do not know if it really is his birthday, is that really worshiping him in spirit and in truth? I'm not judging you, but I'm pleading with you that if you truly love him, you will not worship him in ways he has not told you to do. If you worship him every day, all day, there is no reason to worship him as the pagans do on the day that pagans worship their God. Many people often ask me what I did so it wasn't a shell shock to my children. Stopping the celebration of Christmas is not particularly easy. We were taking the best time of the year away from them while making sure they understood and did not resent Elohim. That's very difficult in this time in the world. I suggest this to any of you who have children. The answer my wife and I came up with is that we made up our own family tradition. We've made the full month of December a month of blessings. We call it Blessings Month, and it's our own family tradition. This is when our whole family participates in blessing each other throughout the month. We all give each other random gifts, and you never know when you will receive something but it takes place all month. 
This allows them to still receive gifts and give at the same time, while not taking part in Christmas at all. On December 25th, Christmas, we lay low and don't speak with anyone. It's just another day for us. But being that the world shuts down, we just stick with each other and block out the world. This is what we did in order to provide an adjustment for our children. This is not a tradition surrounded in worship of Yahshua. This is a family tradition that we take part in as our own thing. It's something our family does that is separate from everything and everyone else. Let's face it, all kids really care about are the gifts. When this is not an initial problem for them, the adjustment away from something you've taken part in all your life is a lot easier. Maybe this is right for you, or maybe you don't agree, but this is what worked for my family. We have not celebrated Christmas for over four years, and now it feels like just another day. Understand, the Christmas spirit is really a spirit. It definitely seeks to attach itself to you during the holiday season. It brings feelings that you do not want to be without. You want to be around all the Christmas lights and all the decorations and the festive attitude and the food and everything else that is associated with Christmas. That is part of the Christmas spirit. It is a spirit. You must rebuke it. Understand we are in the last days. I'm thankful that I was able to make this video and hopefully it helps many others remove themselves from bondage and taking part in things that do not bring the Father any glory. From everything I had just explained, I'm sure you now can understand how Yahshua will say I never knew you to many believers. If they think that this is something that brings him glory and joy, but in fact separates themselves from him, it's easy to see that they never really knew him, and what they knew was just religion. Again, I'm not judging you. I was once in your shoes. You may have done this for years and now feel hardened, maybe saying to yourself, who does this guy think he is? Remember, I started this asking you to pray about it and take it to scripture. I found everyone who has rejected this message has never taken it to scripture and gone off their own personal feelings. Let the word have its final say. If you see scripture that has told you to celebrate Christmas, then share it with everyone. But if you do not see scripture, but have found a way to justify it to yourself, I want you to think long and hard about that decision. This message correlates to many other traditions that we take part in, and I will explain more in future videos. Many of us like to say, well, I see nothing wrong with celebrating Christmas. But always remember, you will not be the judge of yourself. Your opinion does not matter. What you see as right or wrong does not matter. The only thing that matters is what the Bible says. You may be sincere, but you must understand that this is not what he wants from you. He wants obedience to his word. This is why we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. If we were all taught the history of Christmas, then I'm positive it wouldn't be celebrated. If we just stop giving our blind trust to these churches and pastors and read the word on our own, it becomes quite clear that we should not partake in these traditions of men. I provided a link with the scriptures provided in this video for anyone who wants to read them on their own. I'm certain there will be people that still try to rationalize the celebration of this time. This is often because many people do not want to make sacrifices for him. We want to have our cake and eat it too. Just remember, Jesus is not the reason for the season. Tammuz is the reason for the Christmas season. Lucifer is the reason for the Christmas season. When you are celebrating Christmas, you are celebrating Satan, not Jesus. He would not have you celebrating him on the same day that the devil worshippers and pagans have been celebrating their false god for ages before. They just mix paganism with what they call Christian beliefs. You don't celebrate Christmas because you've been told to do so by God, but because you have been passed down this tradition over time and never really questioned it and think it's all good. Exactly what Yahshua says makes the word of Elohim have no effect in your life. Remember, Mark chapter 7 verse 13. Repent and remove these false traditions from your worship of him. Celebrate him every day. Celebrate his birth every day. Think about him every day. Be a blessing to others every day. Reject traditions of men and follow traditions given in his word. Do not be of this world, but be set apart. We do not have much time left, so please make sure you take this seriously and pray about how to apply it. I'm not telling you to just take my words and blindly listen to them. I hope that you do your own research because that's when you'll gain even more conviction. Again, the first place to check is in the word, but historic facts will not lie. I also will post terminology and subjects for you to research as well, along with the scriptures. All you need to do is look it up for yourself. 
I hope you do. Okay, so listen, thanks for watching. If this has blessed you, please like it and share it. Please share this with everyone you know and get the conversation started around it. Let's talk about it in the comments. If you have questions, leave it in the comments and me or the other believers who follow this channel will answer your questions in love. I really would like every believer in the world to watch this video. If you have not done so already, please make sure you have subscribed to this channel. I am dedicated to preparing the bride for Yahshua. Thank you for everyone who supports this channel. Thanks again everyone for watching. Stay strong and be blessed. I love you all.